Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Tomorrow News. We've got crew updates, Starship updates, James Webb updates, Astra updates, an aerospike manufacturer and a whole lot more. So stay tuned as this is your episode of Tomorrow News which is for the week of November 23rd, 2021. We're starting off with the SpaceX update with the announcement of the completion of the Crew 4 roster, which was announced last Tuesday. Mission Specialist 2, Jessica Watkins, will be joining the four person crew set to launch in April next year, which will be comprised of herself, Commander Chell Lindgren, Pilot Robert Hines, and Mission Specialist 1, Samantha Cristoforetti. As you may know, a few weeks back, SpaceX submitted the environmental review to the FAA over the launching of Starship 2 Orbit and some other construction of some other facilities in the Boca Chica area. And we have news that the review is currently on track to be completed by the 31st of December. This matches up from the words we heard from Elon Musk at the 2021 Space Studies Board and Board on Physics and Astronomy joint meeting, that's a mouthful, where he said that the first orbital flight of Starship would be next year. During the live show last Friday, we were discussing the contents of this tweet as Elon has said that the engine that will make life multiplanetary won't be any version of Raptor and in fact a different engine with a different design so it will have to have a new name. Other than that fact, we don't know what the differences will be. There are a lot of theories being thrown around including nuclear and even electric propulsion so if you want our thoughts on the topic in a less serious format then check out Orbit 14 episode 4 which is on the channel. Ship 21's thermal protection Starbrick tiles are still being worked on. This ship in particular is currently expected to fly orbital on top of Booster 5. And speaking of Booster 5, it's just been stacked in the high bay with the top half being mated to the bottom half, which both hold one tank each for the liquid oxygen and methane. Ship 20 has been testing out its flaps ahead of the orbital flight test, which is expected to be its next adventure, as no more static fires are believed to be planned. Now all six engines have been tested whilst being attached to the vehicle. Wide bay construction is still continuing at a good pace, which matches every other piece of ground service equipment at the moment, as the team down in Starbase are preparing for the incoming orbital flight test. The orbital launch mount has been venting what is most likely nitrogen, as the plumbing systems have been getting a bit of a shakedown, and the quick disconnect on the mount for Super Heavy has also been spotted extending and retracting by one of NASA Spaceflight's robotic cameras. James Webb has already been delayed by a long period of time, over 10 years, and even though we are so close to the launch in terms of that 10 years, it isn't the end of delays for the telescope. The launch of JWST on an Ariane 5 was scheduled to take place on December 18th, but it has been pushed by a minimum of four days to December 22nd, as additional testing is needed on the telescope after an incident. A NASA statement reads, a sudden unplanned release of a clamp band caused a vibration throughout the observatory. The clamp bands are what secures the telescope onto the payload adapter for the Ariane 5. Hopefully nothing is wrong, NASA has said that this is just a precautionary measure as no one wants issues when JWST is in space. It's not like Hubble, you can't exactly just fly up a space shuttle to service it because well for one, shuttle isn't flying anymore and for two, James Webb will be a lot further away than Hubble is. LV-7, Astra's fourth orbital flight attempt, lifted off at 0616 coordinated universal time on November the 20th from launch pad 3B at the Pacific Spaceport Complex in Kodiak, Alaska. The previous three attempts had failed to reach orbit for various reasons, the most recent of which, LV-6, suffered an engine failure just after T-0, causing the rocket to do a power slide off of the pad. On board was the STP-27 AD-2 payload for the US Space Force, which ended up 500 kilometers high in orbit, which is designed to measure the environmental conditions during the flight of the vehicle, and because of that reason, it intentionally did not separate from the second stage. This is fantastic for Astra, who have finally managed to reach orbit after several years of trying, and it'll be a big boost to the morale of the team that they have reached this accomplishment before their rivals. CEO Chris Kemp said on the launch broadcast that the next three vehicles vehicles are in production and the company hopes to launch LV-8 before the end of the year. Aerospikes aren't something you usually hear of every day, well unless you're Tim Dodd, but there was an aerospike test in Germany last week, so what's it all about? 
Pangea Aerospace, based in Barcelona, have run several tests of this toroidal aerospike named Demo P1. The tests were conducted in Lampholzhausen, Germany, by the German Aerospace Center. One of those tests was this test you can see here, where the engine ran for over two minutes. Those of you who have seen the Everyday Astronauts fantastic documentary, which you should totally watch on the concept of aerospike engines, will know that the point of their existence is to increase the engine's efficiency, and Pangea is arguing that the engines they are developing could be up to 15% more efficient than regular bell nozzle engines, but viewers of that video will also know how difficult it is to develop aerospike engines. Pangea believe they have sorted the difficult development part though by using a copper alloy which is developed by NASA, GRCOP42, and by 3D printing the regenerative recalled engine which will make it a lot easier to construct the different channels that the propellant flows through before they reach the combustion chamber. We don't yet know what the level of thrust will be for the new engine the company are developing but the CEO, Adria Argemi, has said it will be powerful enough for a small launch vehicle. That new engine is currently planned to be first flown on a vehicle within the next three years but as with everything in aerospace, we shall have to wait and see if that milestone is actually met. With the main stories covered, let's have a look at some space traffic. I covered Astra's launch earlier, so I'm going to skip straight to the launch of this Long March 4B with the Gaofen 1103 remote sensing satellite strapped inside the fairing. Lifting off at 0150 UTC on November the 20th from LC9 at the Taiyan Satellite Launch Center in China, the payload has been delivered to an unknown sun synchronous orbit, which is speculated to be at about 400 kilometers in altitude. Unberthing from the International Space Station at 1300 UTC on the same day, Cygnus NG-16 was released three hours and one minute later from the Canada Arm 2 over the Pacific Ocean and the spacecraft is expected to deorbit and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere on December the 15th. 2345 UTC on November 22nd saw the launch of a Long March 4C with the Gaofen 302 placed inside the payload fairing. Lifting off from the Zhiquan Satellite Launch Center, that's all we know about the mission. Coming up over the next seven days, we have the DART mission on a Falcon 9, the Uzla Voy module on a Soyuz, a Fangzhou 2F, another Soyuz, and China Sat on a Long March 3BE. This girl's a fascination, and nothing in her way will keep her from her destination, cause she's fine. Just before the end of the episode, thank you to all the citizens of tomorrow. Their continued support allows us to stay on your screens. And if you'd like to join the Escape Velocity Orbital, Suborbital, or Ground Support Citizens, then head on over to youtube.com forward slash TMRO forward slash join, or just press the join button below to become a member. Next to that join button, there's also a subscribe button, which should hopefully be grey. So if you feel like it, you can press that as well. Thank you for watching the news. Make sure to catch the live show on Friday and goodbye. Adria Argemi has said that it will be a powerful Adria Argemi has said it will be Adria Argemi has said it will be let's have a look at some space traffic.